In this section, we'll look at... Uh, in this video, we'll look at compound inequalities. Compound inequalities have more than one in inequality, but we solve them completely and we graph them all in a single number line. The solution set it combines answers from both inequalities. Um, how we combine them depends on whether we have an AND inequality, compound inequality, or an OR compound inequality. So we'll look at ANDs first. AND means that we're looking for where the pieces overlap. Okay. We'll look at ORs in a separate video, um, so we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So here's an AND statement. We have 4x minus 3 is less than 17 and 4x minus 2 is greater than negative 22. So we'll start off by solving those inequalities separately. So we'll add 3 to both sides, just like we did in the last section. That gives us 4x is less than 20. And then we want to divide both sides by 4. Now we're dividing by a positive 4, so the sign doesn't change, does not change. That would give us x is less than 5. We'll do this other piece now. We'll do the 4x minus 2 is greater than negative 22. Again, we are going to add 2 to both sides. That leaves us with 4x is greater than negative 20. We'll divide both sides by 4. The x is greater than negative 5. So our set builder notation would just list those two pieces. We would have x is less than 5 and x is greater than negative 5. Let's look at how it looks on a graph. We'll graph this part above the graph in light blue. So it says x is less than 5. So at 5, that's the biggest because it's opening to the 5. We'd want to go less than that. It's less than, not less than or equal to, so we would have a parenthesis there. Now let's graph this one. We'll do it in green, again above the number line. We're at negative 5, and it's opening to the x, so we want to go bigger than negative 5. So we would go this way. Again, it's just greater than, so we'd have a parenthesis right there. So the actual graph, what we want to graph, would be putting just where they overlap. So the, where they start to overlap is right here. So we'd put a parenthesis at negative 5. They overlap here. And then they end overlapping right here at the 5, where there's another parenthesis. So that's our graph because of this AND, where they overlap. So our interval notation would be to read that graph from left to right. It starts at negative 5 with the parenthesis, and it goes to 5 with the parenthesis. And so that's our interval notation. This is another AND statement, even though it doesn't have the word AND. We have 4x minus 3 is less than 9. We'll draw our lines down through the inequalities like we've done in the past. And when we do that, you can see that there's three pieces to this. So generally, the first thing we would do would be to add that 3. We're going to do that this time as well, but we're going to do it in all three parts. We're going to solve it all at once. So it gives us 3 here, 4x here, and 12 here. And then we'll divide each piece by 4. It's a positive 4, so the signs do not change. And that would give us 3 fourths is less than x is less than 3. So that's what we would write for our set builder notation here, 3 fourths is less than x is less than 3. So now let's talk about the graph. I told you this was an AND, and it's an AND because it's of the way it's written. When it's all written smashed together, it's automatically an AND. So if we look at this piece of it, we'll graph it first above the line just to see where it is. 
So this is opening to the x, so it's saying x is biggest, um, bigger than 3 fourths. So 3 fourths would be just a little bit less than 1. And if we want x to be bigger, we would go this direction. It's just less than, so we'd have a parenthesis there. And now we'll look at this piece. So we're going to mark a 3. It's opening to the 3, so that means x is smaller, which means we'd want to go this direction. So put a parenthesis there. So where it overlaps would be our final graph. We have a parenthesis at 3 fourths and a parenthesis at 3, and the shading goes in between. Now I usually think of it as all at once. This x is in between, so I want to shade in between 3 fourths and 3, rather than graphing the two pieces. So we read this interval notation. It starts at 3 fourths and goes to 3 and close it. So again, because x is in between, we're shading in between all one piece. In the next video, we'll look at OR statements.